Hello and welcome into another edition of Locked on Wolves. Two big topics to cover today. Number one, more Ben Simmons talk, because of course, why not? It's the summer of Simmons. What are some possible trade ideas for the Wolves? Either just Minnesota, Philadelphia to get a trade done. Could there be a third team involved? Uh, rehashing a couple of those ideas and also a little bit of new reporting from around the NBA uh, blogosphere as well. And then the second topic is Leandro Balmaro. He's reportedly about to officially sign his rookie deal with Minnesota. Could he crack the rotation? What will the Wolves nine or 10 man rotation look like now that they have a roster that legitimately goes 12 deep? Welcome in to another edition of Lockdown Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves, your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Wolves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Locked On Wolves. I'm also the co-editor of Dunking With Wolves, the Timberwolves site on the fan side of network. Uh, today, a reminder that Wednesdays on Locked On NBA, you can uh, listen into Small Market Meets Big Market. Wednesdays on Locked On NBA is Jake Madison of the Locked On Pelicans podcast and John Corrales of Locked On Celtics. For a look at the NBA week from all angles, follow the Locked On NBA podcast today on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Of course, it's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy hump day. Today, I want to talk once again about all things Ben Simmons because there's always Ben Simmons news out there. Um, and so I want to cover Simmons today. I want to also cover a little bit of Leandro Bolmaro stuff. There's a report that he's about to sign officially with the Wolves. Uh, so I want to look at what the rotation could look like once he's officially inked to a deal with Minnesota. Um, let's actually start there. So this was first reported by Dane Moore of the Dane Moore NBA podcast. Of course, a fantastic Tim Rules pod that you should also subscribe and follow and listen to. Um, Dane reports that it, he says he's heard that Balmaro is about to sign his four year, $11.8 million rookie scale contract this week. Um, there's a, a chime in from Darren Wolfson, of course, to score North and KSTP in the twin cities who says, uh, that, uh, everything is, this is a directly from Doogie's tweet quote, everything is expected to be wrapped up with Balmaro in the next 24 hours. Same with the formal announcing of the McLaughlin and Vanderbilt contract. So, um, all of this is, is is going to happen here pretty quickly. Of course, the McLaughlin and Vanderbilt stuff was reported last Friday and is uh, is really, you know, hasn't been made official by the team, but but we've known about it now for a few days. Talked about it on a couple of shows already. Um, so now the Wolves have essentially their roster, right? They've got their 14 guys, their 12 guys, uh, or I guess their 14 guys total, their 12 plus two non-guaranteed guaranteed deals. You've got two two-way players. Looking at the Wolves roster now, what, what does the rotation look like? So I want to start there on today's show. Um, and, and then we can dive into Simmons here in just a minute. But first, uh, you know, we talked already about the likely starting starting lineup, right? Um, D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, and whoever you have playing the four. I think it's Jared Vanderbilt, could be Jaden McDaniels. One of those guys will be in the starting lineup. Then your bench unit, you've got Patrick Beverly, at backup point guard. You, at this point, are going to have uh, very likely, this is uh, Josh Kogi. Torian Prince, Nas Reed, and then whoever doesn't start between McDaniels or Vanderbilt will be next up. Jalen Noel would then be your 11th guy, I guess, in this scenario, followed by Leandro Balmaro would be your 12th guy. Um, that still leaves Jordan McLaughlin without a role in the regular rotation. It leaves uh, Jake Lehman, who I think would be kind of the odd man out at this point, so that's that's your 14 guys, plus you've got your two two-way guys and McKinley Wright and Nathan Knight, um, who you know are not going to they're they're not going to typically be with the team and in the rotation, you know, barring injury. But but what does this mean for the likes of Noel, who's obviously got some upside and and came on strongly at, at times last year and had a solid summer league? What does this mean for Balmaro, who fans are gonna really want to see? He the team obviously thinks highly of him moving forward. What does the rotation look like on opening night? The bet here is that Balmaro falls outside the rotation. The bet here is that so does Jordan McLaughlin. And probably at this stage, so does Jalen Noel. Um, now, it just kind of depends on how things break out. It's not like the Wolves are going to have, like, say, uh, Josh Akogi and Jared Vanderbilt are not going to share the floor together very often. You can't have two complete non-offensive factors on the floor at the same time. So 
you have to be careful with staggering those minutes. Also, I think Beverly is going to play off the ball quite a bit. So you could have Jalen Noel almost kind of run point guard and play Beverly off the ball. I think we'll see Beverly in some closing lineups with Russell and Beasley. So they'll manipulate that a little bit too. Uh, basically, I don't know, half the guys I just mentioned could all play the four, right? Nas Reed could play some four. Torian Prince could play some four. Um, Josh Kogi, I don't think we'll ever play four under under the new coaching staff under Chris Finch. Um, Leandro Balmaro is is best cast as a point forward in the NBA, probably a small forward who's initiating offense, uh, maybe not right away. But what he's going to bring is going to be more defensively and then also as a creative playmaker. I don't think he's in the regular rotation early. He may even have the opportunity to play some in the G League this year. The Wolves want to get him used to the, the G League style of G League slash NBA style of play that obviously he hasn't been playing overseas. Um, but don't expect Leandro Balmaro to get a lot of minutes early on. Um, I had an extensive breakdown when I talked to Jake Painting of Canis Hoopus back just prior to the Olympics. So I guess this would have been what, uh, like mid July, maybe. So I guess, geez, almost two months ago now. Uh, but go back and listen to that podcast with myself and Jake Painting breaking down Balmaro's game, what he brings to the NBA. Uh, and I think the first thing, um, I guess to to spoil the episode I just asked you to listen to, but the first thing is point of attack defense. And, and that's something that the Wolves, when they drafted him, they basically had none of that. Now, Jaden McDaniels is a, is a pretty good perimeter defender. He's just a better overall team defender at this point. You don't really want him on an island guarding ball handling guards necessarily, but McDaniels, Josh Kogi, Patrick Beverly are all very good above average point of attack, point of attack defenders. Um, and it's a little bit less of a need. And, and I'm not, I don't think, I think that's fair to say at this stage, it's a little bit less of a need than when Balmaro was drafted, but that's what he could provide from day one at the NBA level team defense, point of attack, defense length, playmaking ability in the open court. Um, and so he, the, the positive thing about how the off season has gone for the wolves is that Balmaro won't have to be pressed into action at this stage of things. Um, so don't expect him to be in the regular rotation. Don't expect, uh, obviously Jake Lehman, don't expect, um, Jordan McLaughlin to be in the regular rotation. And Jalen Noel's probably your 11th guy, again, depending on matchups. I mean, if Patrick Beverly stays healthy and, I don't know, say uh, both Jared Vanderbilt and Jordan McLaughlin, excuse me, Jared Vanderbilt and Jade McDaniels are both defending at an above average level, we could see Josh Kogi get squeezed a little bit for minutes because Anthony Edwards is going to lead this team, in, is going to lead this team in minutes. D'Angelo Russell is going to be on the floor a lot. Beverly is going to be on the floor in crunch time with Russell. It could be Josh Kogi that ends up being the 10th, 11th guy. Um, as we get into the season. And remember, whatever the opening net rotation looks like, that's not what this thing's going to look like in game 10, in game 20, in game 35. Um, it's going to change quite a bit. And so I don't want to overreact to whatever the rotation actually looks like on opening night. Um, but it'll be really interesting to see how this thing all comes together. Um, what I want to do next is talk about Ben Simmons. There's a great article. Uh, our friend John Krasinski over at The Athletic had a great piece come out where he did a mailbag and talked a lot about, um, you know, Simmons potential trades for Simmons. How does he fit with the Timberwolves team uh, or how would he fit? How could the Wolves potentially acquire him without trading D'Angelo Russell, without obviously trading Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns. I want to get into his mailbag a little bit and add some commentary as to what I think some potential trades could look like. I also wrote about this at Dunkin' with Wolves this week um, and have been kind of mulling over some other potential trade offers the Wolves could put together for uh, for Ben Simmons. So that'll be basically the rest of the show today. Um, we'll be more Simmons talk. So before you get to all that though, let's talk about our great friends over at direct TV. Of course, now that it's football season, direct TV is, is, uh, I think a lot of us are, are tuned into direct TV. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. You got multiple screens going, well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. The best part is that there's no annual contract. Get rid of the clutter and the confusion. Get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, let's go ahead and talk uh, about Ben Simmons. So the, I guess we can start with the latest, the latest information that we have. And, and I don't know that there's really any actual new like rumors that are out there, but um, the Krasinski mailbag over at the athletic had to do a lot with, of course, Simmons questions. 
Um, his thought is in line with kind of where I've been at on this show is that it's unlikely at this point that a trade actually happens before training camp. We're two weeks out from training camp, right? There's no clear momentum towards a trade getting done. However, it there this thing is going to, it could very easily unravel. And I don't know that it's a Jimmy Butler situation. There, there's similarities and differences and, and John goes through them. But to me, the biggest difference is Butler was in the last year of his deal. Simmons isn't. Um, Simmons is also not quite yet to the prime of his career. Butler was in the middle of his. That said, I don't think Simmons is legit going to hold out for like, say Maury doesn't pull the trigger on a trade before training camp. I think it's pretty unlikely that Ben Simmons sits out until like January, right? I think at some point, uh, Maury calls Simmons bluff, or I guess he's currently calling his bluff and Simmons will cave and say, okay, I'll report. I just don't see him sitting out in the prime of his career. Even if he's got the security, I mean, he could, he could get fined. Obviously if he sits out, I think at some point he reports, I think it's more like a James Harden situation in Houston, which of course isn't apples to apples either, but I think Simmons shows up. He does his, you know, it's just kind of a miserable feel around the team. And I think eventually a trade gets done. I'm completely guessing, but it feels like a November, December type thing. Maybe it's somewhere in between, you know, Butler was traded mid-November. Harden was a little bit later than that, obviously, in the it, coming out of the the middle pandemic year, pandemic shortened year into the next pandemic shortened year. Um, so again, not apples to apples, but it feels like a few weeks from now is is when this thing finally comes to a head. And the Sixers don't really have leverage outside of them just claiming that they're okay to ride this out. Um, Simmons only leverage is that he can just not show up. But at this point, everybody knows that the, that the Sixers want to and need to trade Ben Simmons, right? So at some point, the offers can can continue to come down. Um, we know that Daryl Morey opened by asking for ridiculous things. We know that he asked the Golden State Warriors for James Wiseman, Andrew Wiggins, four first-round picks and three first-round pick swaps, which is insane. Um, no doubt he asked the Timberwolves for Carl Anthony Towns or Anthony Edwards, probably one of those guys, plus one of Malik Beasley and D'Angelo Russell. I guess salary-wise, it would probably have to be Malik Beasley to make things work. I, I can almost guarantee that that is what Maury's opening asking price was, and the Timberwolves opening offer was probably something like a hodgepodge of, of you know, McDaniels and Beasley and all these different... It, it'd be tough to match salaries without including D'Angelo Russell, um, especially now with Ricky Rubio gone. But now that Torian Prince can be traded, we're more than 30 days past that trade. It could be a mix of, you know, J Jade McDaniels, some picks, maybe Malik Beasley plus Torian Prince. And there you get their salary wise and, and, and there's our offer. And ultimately it's going to land somewhere in the middle. Even if it's not the Wolves that gets Ben Simmons, the Sixers aren't getting seven first rounders, you know, last year's number two overall pick and Andrew Wiggins. They're also not going to get, Carl Anthony Towns or Anthony Edwards in a deal for Ben Simmons. Um, what this ultimately is going to be is somewhere in the middle. It's not going to happen tomorrow, I don't think. I also don't think it's going to, you know, I don't think the Sixers are going to be able to wait this thing out until like the deadline, right? I think this is going to have to be a late fall, early winter type trade. That said, can the Wolves get all their assets together and convince Daryl Morey and the Sixers to get this thing to happen sooner rather than later. Let's start with the with the just a two team trade uh, ideas here. Could the Wolves and Sixers get this done without involving a third team? Um, which, by the way, Krasinski points out he he uh, talks about Brian Winhorst uh, from ESPN in his mailbag. Winhorst was on Doogie's podcast, the Scoop podcast um, that he does uh, with Score North, Darren Wolfson's. Uh, overall, Twin City Sports, not just Timberwolves podcast, but he had Windhorse on to talk about the Timberwolves. And Windhorse says that the Wolves don't have enough talent to make the playoffs and they don't have enough assets to get Simmons if they don't trade Cat or Ant. I've talked about this before on the show. I dis I I agree with the uh, I guess the latter statement, the way that I phrased it. I don't think the Wolves actually should be able to get Ben Simmons in a trade without including Cat or Ant. I don't think that the Sixers want. Max contract, D'Angelo Russell. I'll say this to him blue in the face. It's not what Daryl Morey wants. I also don't think, I think he can settle for something that's better than Max contract, D'Angelo Russell as well. Um, I disagree with Windhorse, and this is a conversation for another episode about the current roster having enough talent to make the playoffs. Th they absolutely do. Um, it's, it's just kind of, it's actually kind of, I don't know. It, it feels kind of insane to suggest that 
the current Timberwolves roster doesn't have enough talent to make the playoffs. If you buy that Carl Anthony Towns is a top 20 player in the league, even if he's a top 25 player, and that uh, Anthony Edwards is a top 100 player who could ascend very quickly, D'Angelo Russell's a top 175 player, then yes, the answer is yes. There's enough talent on this roster to make the playoffs. Um, you can't have it both ways. We can't call Carl Anthony Towns a top 20, 25 player and then say, well, this, this roster can't make the playoffs. The reason they haven't made the playoffs the last two years is because uh, not the sole reason, but the biggest reason is Towns' injuries, right? If Towns is healthy the last two years, when he's been healthy and on the court, this has been a much closer to 500 team. Um, and then you add in, you know, the, the talent, the roster is simply much more talented this coming season than it was two years ago, say. And uh, add in Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, and Carl Anthony Towns together have played 500 basketball. It's just crazy to think that this talent, this roster doesn't have talent to make the playoffs. But that's a conversation. I'll get into that when we get closer to the season. I'll get on my soapbox about the ridiculous over under and, and some of those things that that's out there at this point for the Wolves, because I, I do think this is a playoff caliber roster. Um, and remember, I say that knowing that 10 teams make the play in, right? I'm not saying that they're for sure the eighth best team. They may be the ninth or 10th best team, but you can't tell me they're not in the top 10 in the West as currently constructed in terms of roster talent. And, and if they play to their talent with improved coaching, which is the other, the, maybe the most obvious thing I didn't even mention yet. Um, this is this, this team has enough talent to make the playoffs at any rate. I don't think the Wolves should be able to get Ben Simmons without trading Towns or Edwards or without including a third team. That said, if the Wolves had to pony up, if they had to give up true assets for Ben Simmons in a deal with the Sixers and Sacramento's out and Golden State's out and Cleveland's out and, and Philly can't get anybody else to play ball, here's what I think the Timberwolves could do. I think this could work. The Wolves could trade D'Angelo Russell, Jade McDaniels, and three future first round picks. It's probably a, a 20, what is this? 20, so 22, 24, 26 first round picks. Um, every other year, three total first round picks plus D'Lo plus Jane McDaniels for Ben Simmons and Matisse Thibel. Now, again, the Sixers don't want to do this. If the Sixers would do this today, I'm confident the Wolves would do it. It would already be done. Uh, ben Simmons would be getting his jersey at Target Center. We'd find out what number he's wearing, 25, 22, the whole thing. We would, we would know all of this if the Sixers wanted to do this. They're not there yet, um, but this would be the given trade for the Wolves because you've got to trade D'Angelo Russell. We know that Gerson Rosas does not want to trade Russell. He doesn't want to upset the apple cart with Russell and Towns, and, and rightfully so, um, for a number of reasons. The, the Russell-Towns fit is still too good to, and we haven't really gotten to see it, to, to just jettison him right away, right? Now that he's healthy, et cetera. Um, however, if you buy that Simmons is better than Russell, which he is. And actually, in a vacuum, Matisse Thibel is better than Jade McDaniels. He is. Then trading three first-round picks to gain, you've got two extra years of team control for Simmons than you do for Russell. And the same, or actually, uh, I guess one less year for Thibel than McDaniels, because McDaniels is, this is his second year at Thibel. This will be his third year. Um, but you're gaining team control. You're improving your defense, and you're improving you're improving your defense exponentially by acquiring Simmons and Thibel and, and getting rid of Russell. Uh, so, if you're the Timberwolves, you, you would make this trade. You'd be better immediately, and you get four years of Simmons versus two years of Russell. The reason I don't think the Sixers do this is because they don't really want max contract D'Angelo Russell, and they were the number one seed in the East last year. They're not rebuilding the three first round picks from a team that will be really good in the Timberwolves aren't all that valuable. Jaden McDaniels, you could look at him as a lottery talent with a star type ceiling. But again, that's not really what the Sixers want to do. They would still be really good. They'd still be a top three, four team in the East, certainly with a big two of Joel Embiid and D'Angelo Russell. I mean, the fit between Embiid and Russell is really good too. Uh, and McDaniels obviously helps their defense. But I, I don't think this is an ideal trade for the Sixers or the Timberwolves. However, the way what I call this on dunking with wolves when I wrote about this is this is the given trade really for both sides. This is the Timberwolves saying, fine, you can have D'Lo and McDaniels in the picks and the Sixers saying, fine, we'll take D'Lo and we'll give you Thibel and, you know, let's call this thing good. This is the given scenario. Um, and, and I, this could be what we're looking at. If, if both teams throw up their hands and say, let's just get this thing done. And the Timberwolves would improve immediately. The second, actually, I'll get to this one in a second. I've got a best case trade package, which I think is a legit possibility, best case for the Timberwolves. So we'll get to that next. 
Um, and then I'll, and then I'll hit the three team trade here last as well. Uh, before we do that though, let's talk about Built Bar. Did you know that Built Bar has tons of delicious flavors? Uh, Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar of all time. I, I guarantee it. if you like protein bars, but you haven't had Built Bar, you have to have Built Bar. It tastes just like a candy bar. There's nine delicious flavors. You can get a mix box and get two of each of the nine flavors, mint brownie, salted caramel, cookies, and cream, anything with coconut. That's where it's at. Check out the macros in Built Bars. Not only do they taste delicious, but they're all healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein. Calories ranging from 130 to 180, only four to five grams of sugar and just four to five grams net carbs. They're all amazing flavors. They're all healthy and delicious. Built Bar is also the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCK15. You'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Let's also talk about betonline.ag. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back on on to start for another football season as always bet online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season with the new and updated site and interface even more odds props and contests betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today receive your 100 welcome bonus that's double your initial deposit just for signing up don't forget to use the promo code nfl100 from football basketball boxing and right on down to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Okay, let's talk more Simmons. So, one more idea for a two team trade that that this would be the best case for the Timberwolves. Before I get into the the three team thing, um, so if the Wolves end up with their dream scenario of not trading again this is they're not trading towns they're not trading edwards no matter how much daryl morey says it it's not happening the dream scenario is to to get out of this thing without trading d'angelo russell and and we could argue about whether the wolves should should prefer to retain mcdaniels or russell mcdaniels has more trade value probably in this moment um simply because he's got higher upside uh you know going into year two than d does He's already a better two-way player than D'Angelo Russell. He's a lot cheaper, or I should say more affordable. The problem is, is that his contract isn't big enough for him to be the centerpiece of this deal. So the best case for the Timberwolves, if they're going to keep D'Lo and everything they've invested into him and the relationship and, and the pairing between he and Towns, if the Wolves can send the Sixers Malik Beasley, Jaden McDaniels, Torian Prince to match the salaries and four future first-round picks just to get back Simmons, that would be the dream scenario. That gives the Wolves their starting lineup of uh, D'Angelo Russell, Ben Simmons, Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Vandos, you're starting four, Torian Prince, um, I guess he ends up getting included in this trade from a salary perspective, so he's not there anymore, but you'd have, um, you know, you have enough depth. You still have Patrick Beverly, Josh Okogie. Um, I should say, I think the Sixers would probably push to get Patrick Beverly instead of Torian Prince in this deal from a salary perspective for that final piece. And I guess from a roster balancing perspective, that does make more sense for Minnesota because. Uh, if you're trading out Beasley um, and you're trading out uh, or you're getting back Ben Simmons, it makes sense to also trade out Patrick Beverly because you're keeping D'Angelo Russell, right? Um, then to trade out Prince. But Beverly's a better player than Prince. So I think that the teams could haggle over that. Maybe there's some extra compensation, a second rounder going back and forth there if the Sixers insist on Beverly. Uh, but the way I've got it drawn up is Beasley, McDaniels, and Prince to the Sixers plus four future first round picks for Simmons to Minnesota. This works from a salary perspective and Prince can be traded now because of the shortened off season instead of the 60 day waiting period for his contract to be aggregated. It's actually only 30 days um, hat tip to a couple of people. And sorry, I don't have your handles in front of me, but a couple of people on Twitter pointed that out that that rule shifted this year and it's not reflected in a lot of the trade machines that are out there. Um, so the wolves could do this today. If the Sixers said, let's do it. Beasley McDaniels Prince four first rounders for Ben Simmons. The Sixers do this because it helps them now, right? I mean, they still need to figure out the point guard thing there, but um, because also they want to move Tyrese Maxey, so they, they need to find a point guard, but they get Beasley to add the offense to to play off of Joel Embiid, outside shooting, transition scoring, et cetera. Jaden McDaniels as a two-way piece now, upside, uh, basically the equivalent of, of a high first rounder. You know, if they're shipping out Tyrese Maxey, they can replace his talent level, at least young talent, affordable talent with Jaden McDaniels. Prince and or Beverly, 
makes the salaries work, but also provides some veteran, you know, playoff caliber rotation depth for them. And then the four first rounders, again, from a team that will be good in the Timberwolves, less valuable and also less valuable to a team that wants to be a championship contender now. But the other thing is the Sixers could turn them, turn right around. They could say, keep McDaniels and ship out Beasley and some picks to get back a point guard or whatever that might be. Uh, maybe later down the road, it's a Damian Lillard trade or there's somebody else that becomes unhappy that they can trade for at the deadline. That would be a very Durham war thing to do. It would kind of, you know, aggregate those assets and then and then flip them down the road. Uh, you know, be a good team early in the season, try and make a big deadline blockbuster. That could be the thought process that uh Maury and the Sixers front office have if a deal like this gets done. Again, this is best case for the Timberwolves. And if you're a Sixers fan and you're listening or watching this, I get it. It wouldn't be exciting to get Malik Beasley, Jaden McDaniels, Torian Prince, and four firsts for Ben Simmons. But the Sixers don't have that much leverage, and this could be where they end up. And you got to pick between this package or sending out Thibault, getting back D'Angelo Russell and Jaden McDaniels, and maybe one or two less picks. Um, if those are the packages you choose from, I think the Timberwolves prefer trading Beasley and the extra pick to trading Russell. The Sixers, I, I don't know. I go back and forth on which one makes more sense for them, um, and Sixers fans may have a better handle on that. But I mean, you could argue that either one of these would be palatable returns for Ben Simmons. Again, with no leverage of this is what it comes down to. Uh, this is what we could be looking at. Okay, the three-team deal idea. I mentioned this a few weeks ago, and I played around with it, and it shifted. It's it. I tweaked it a little. But the idea here is, and this isn't a deal that's about to happen like tomorrow. This is like a December deal. If Portland gets off to a bad start, if training camp doesn't go well, and Lillard has, has apprehension about playing for Chauncey Billups or whatever happens, if... We know that Daryl Morey wants, he's big game hunting all the time, right? He wants Damian Lillard as his prize for Ben Simmons. Um, and if if things don't start well for Portland, could we see a three-team deal where the Sixers get Lillard, the Timberwolves get Ben Simmons, the Blazers get some combination of assets from both Philly and Minnesota? The way I've got this written up at Ducky with Wolves is D'Angelo Russell, Jaden McDaniels, Tyrese Maxey, and a couple of first-rounders go to Portland. So they get a couple of win now type guys. And well, actually, really, all three of those guys are good players, Russell, McDaniels, and Maxi. So do they do the trade? They get D'Lo and Maxi in their backcourt. They get McDaniels as a two-way young player, uh, exciting young player for Portland. So they could actually be a fringe playoff team still in the Western Conference. You can't tell me that that team, even without Damian Lillard, if they get to keep CJ, CJ McCollum and add in D'Lo, McDaniels, and Maxi, you're going to be a little short on defense. But uh, they are anyway, as it is. It's not like they're going to get that much worse defensively by trading out Damian Lillard. I mean, that's still a fringy playoff team in the West. You're still better than Sacramento. You're still better than, um, I don't know, what's what's another bad team in the West? I'm, I'm blanking on, on the other bad teams in the West, but you're better than Sacramento. You're probably still better than New Orleans. Um, you know, you're, you're better than San Antonio, certainly. Uh, so they've got a shot then still at the playoffs and you're kind of rebuilding on the fly with two exciting young players that were just rookies last year in McDaniels and Maxi, plus a couple of first round picks, albeit likely late first rounders from one from the way I'm thinking is Philadelphia sends one Minnesota sends one. Um, because again, they're getting the two best players in the deal by far. That could be an attractive deal for the Blazers to sell to their fan base. Hey, we're not punting on, on the now we have D'Angelo Russell. We have Tyrese Maxey, we have Jaden McDaniels, but also Jaden McDaniels and Tyrese Maxey are really nice nucleus for the future. They could flip CJ McCollum in a year or two. You get a couple of extra picks. Not a hard thing to sell to your fan base. The other version of this deal would be if 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 Clutch Sports really wants, who of course represents both Simmons and Maxey, if they want those guys as a package deal, Maxey could go to Minnesota. The Wolves could instead send Beasley to Portland um, or they could send Beasley I guess the salaries wouldn't work if you pull Russell out. So you'd have to play around with that. And it'd have to be like Beasley and Prince um, with the Wolves getting Maxi. That's not as attractive for the Blazers, I'm sure. So I wonder if there's something there where Minnesota sends a couple of additional assets. Maybe there's an extra first rounder plus Beasley and either Prince or Beverly to Portland, or maybe Beverly goes to Philly. But something with those three teams really could work. And it all hinges on, and, and I hate to do this, you know, for the sake of small market teams, I hope that things don't get ugly in Portland. But if they really do, I mean, there's crazier things, right? That this could happen. This could be a Simmons to Minnesota, Lillard to Philly, D'Lo, McDaniels, Maxi picks to Portland. Some combination of those things. 
Um, maybe Maxi ends up in Minnesota. I, I think it's feasible. I don't think it's insane to uh, to consider this as a realistic possibility. Um, but again, not happening tomorrow. Don't get your hopes up for this to be a, a, a quick turnaround type thing. And not really based on any specific rumor other than knowing Philly's interest in Lillard, knowing Lillard almost asking out earlier this summer, and also the Timberwolves' interest, of course, in Simmons. Putting Piecing all those things together, if there's only so many guys that Maury is willing to 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 make the trade for, you know, to, to ship Simmons out for, and Lillard is clearly one of them. This this thing could have legs, um, and and that's the thought process here. So, um, those are my three best at this point best guesses for potential trade packages involving Ben Simmons. Um, we'll see how this thing goes down. It feels like there's little bits of information almost every day, um, so we'll continue to track this. We have a show again on Friday, so we'll talk about this. I'm sure on Friday between now and then, who knows. Um, and uh, that'll continue to be kind of the focus, the the underlying theme of the preseason coverage of of the Timberwolves here at Lockdown Wolves. A reminder, if you're not already following or subscribed to this podcast, you can do that anywhere you listen to podcasts um, and also where you watch podcasts, hopefully on YouTube. But you can subscribe audio on Apple, Google, Spotify, and of course, the all new Odyssey app. YouTube, Lockdown Wolves YouTube channel. Please subscribe and like um, like each episode. Subscribe to the feed again, free um, and brand new to YouTube. This is like episode, I don't know, eight at this point, I think, on YouTube. Uh, you can also follow on Twitter, of course, at Lockdown T Wolves and at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. Um, a reminder that you can uh, you can also listen to Locked On NBA every day of the week. There's a different um, a different pairing of hosts every day, Monday through Friday. The Wednesday show is Small Market Beats meets Big Market. That's Jake Madison of Lockdown Pelicans, John Corrales of Lockdown Celtics for a look at the NBA week from all angles. You can follow Lockdown NBA anywhere you listen to podcasts as well as on YouTube. Um, uh, really, the vast majority of Lockdown podcasts, Lockdown NBA shows for sure are on YouTube now as well. So be sure to do that. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today. A reminder that Lockdown Wolves is, of course, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. We'll be back on Friday this week. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves Podcast, and we'll catch you next time.